Hello guys, welcome to the channel. Today I thought I'd show you something slightly different and as you can see that is Airfix's 1 to 43 scale Bucati Chiron starter set. Before I continue I should say that both the kits in this video were received free by me from Airfix at the recent Airfix Creators uh, Day. However I was told to do what I like with them, uh, there was no pressure for me to give a review, uh, certainly no pressure to give a good review or anything similar, so all the opinions in this video are my own. So this Bugatti and this Pagani are two of the more recent additions to Airfix's starter kit range. Being a starter kit, they include a paintbrush, a tube of poly cement, and all of the paints that you'll need to paint the kit. As you can see from the front box here, Airfix recommends these for children 8 and above. I couldn't find any 8 year olds, but I do have a friend who has a 6 year old, so I borrowed him for the purpose of this experiment. So let's have a look on the back of the box. We can see some nice artwork there. And it gives you the actual size of the vehicle as well, which I think is quite important, especially given that 1 to 43 is not a very common scale. So looking inside, we have this one bag which contains uh, another bag of clear parts, two sprues and one uh, shell. So looking at this first sprue here, we can see we've got essentially all of the interior components. So the inside of the floor, the dash, the seats, uh, the wheel rims there, I think, and then the uh, door interiors. One thing I noticed on these sprues is they're almost like kits of old in that they don't have that outside frame around the sprue. And most of the parts are attached with just one point to the sprue. I'm pretty sure Airfix have done this for ease of access for beginners. And certainly the six year old that built this kit found it very easy to just snap off the parts from the sprue and then sand those sprue nubs down. No need to use any knives or anything similar. And he said that was very easy to remove those. He had no great difficulty doing that. We also have this shell, which is separate from the main sprue. You can see there compared to my hand, how big the car will be. We do also have this single clear part. This is really nice, so all the windows are on one big clear part there, and that just glues onto the roof of the vehicle. Much better than doing um, individual windows for, uh, for new modelers. We have four paints here, so one tub of the blue, which is the main body color, one black, one light metallic aluminium color, and one kind of dark gray color that you can't really tell apart from the black at the moment. I know some people have reported problems with these paints from Airfix and then been dried up, but the kid who built this had absolutely no problems with these paints. And he did so using this Airfix paintbrush, which is actually quite nice. We also have a small decal sheet. Nothing major. They're standard water slide decals, they're not stickers. One thing I do like is these instructions. I think Airfix instructions in general are pretty good, but uh, these ones are a bit of a step up. So you'll see we've got a few new features here. Um, first of all, they're in color. So we have the floor there in black because it needs painting black. We have the interior floor there in blue because it needs painting blue. And we have this really handy sprue map on the left hand side there, which highlights the location of the pieces you'll need for this step. The color call out in particular is really handy because the numbers that are here, so number 21 there for the black, are very hard to read on the paint pots especially black because it's a black part with black ink on it. Finally, the feature I really like is these small yellow areas on the steps. And that indicates to the builder where the glue should go for that part. You can see here we move through the interior of the car, putting the dashboard in, then the doors and the wheels. clear parts in place and then by the end of the step nine there you can see that sprue map is almost depleted most of the parts have been used and then finally over leaf putting in the brakes and the wheels so the six-year-old that uh, built this started sort of uh, early afternoon one day built a lot of the kit during that time and then he finished it the next morning by painting it and putting the final touches on let's have a quick look at what he produced 
So as you can see here, perhaps that blue paint could have been given another coat to make it fully cover the uh, the body. I think he was at a bit short of it by the end and maybe um, with hindsight we could have watered that paint down a bit. We've of course got the classic beginner modeler's um, thumbprint there on the windscreen. But I think overall actually he's done a pretty good job of that. And uh, in particular I do like the fact that because the um, framing on the uh, the canopy, as it were, was painted before the clear parts were put in place, we didn't get any paint on the clear parts whatsoever. And he did all of that really without any help from, uh, from me or any adults. He found it perfectly easy to follow the instructions, perfectly easy to remove the parts and put them together. So yes, I think we, have, uh, we had one happy child and uh, he really enjoyed that process and was really happy with the end result. Okay, let's take a quick look at the second kit, which is the uh, Bugatti Chiron before we go. Um, also a starter kit. So it's got paints, of course, brush, glue, etc. Very similar setup for this one compared to the first one. This time, of course, things are predominantly in red plastic. And I guess really, if we had a real beginner or, or quite a young modeler, they could even just build it without painting it or they could just paint the uh, the details and not paint the red parts. But a very similar setup. So even a more advanced model I think could make a very good job of this and be, be happy with the result. I'm quite jealous actually, in a way I wish I'd uh, kept this and built it myself. Maybe I'll have to find one the next time I'm in the shop. So guys, there we go. That was a very quick look at those two Airfix starter sets. I've been really busy with quite a lot of things recently, so uh, I haven't had a chance to make too much content. I have, however, been modeling lots in the background. Um, so let me show you a sneak preview of a couple of the things here that are ongoing. All of these are going to be part of dioramas, which is why they're taking a bit longer than normal. But I'm really excited to show you these models when they're finished. I'm looking forward to showing you how I sort of built the terrain and how I used a few new techniques as well to, uh, to get to the, uh, the end result. So stay tuned for those. Of course, my Patreon supporters and my YouTube members have uh, sneak previews of lots of uh, work in progress images and behind the scenes photos and so on. Uh, so those guys know quite a lot already about uh, my ongoing projects. And I need to say thank you to those people for their massive support. It's a really um, supportive little uh, community that we have going there, both on uh, YouTube as members and on Patreon. And I really appreciate the support you give me, so thank you very much, guys. And of course, if you would like to join either the YouTube membership or Patreon, they're essentially the same in terms of the benefits that you get. Then there are links in the description below. And finally, thanks to all of you for watching. It is greatly appreciated. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you've got any opinions about these starter kits or uh, any other Airfix kits, then please feel free to leave a comment below. And until next time, have fun modeling.